Hello everyone, my name is Mike, and this is the Board Cyborg. <laughs> That's my maniacal laugh. Welcome back to yet another episode. I want to point out the extent of my Halloween decorations for my show. Uh, it's been a rough year and I can't really spend too much money to spiffy things up and make them look Halloween-y. But I do have a few little decorations. We got the Xenomorph and little baby Jason. It's his It's his son. The Xenomorph gave birth to baby Jason. Uh, machete and all. It, was, it wasn't a pretty sight. And Frankenstein's monster, which I found at the ReStore before I started doing a... Uh, um, thrifting videos actually, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, today's video is a collection video. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do uh, a boutique collection video. I have a bunch of boutique label stuff in terms of horror. Obviously, all the videos this October are going to be horror related, and this video is as well. So what I'm gonna do today is take a look at my Blue Underground DVD and Blu-ray collections, as well as my Grindhouse releasing releases, which I don't have too many of. I have a good amount of Blue Underground, not too many Grindhouse releasing, but I haven't seen all these films, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys uh, little sections of my boutique horror label, boutique label horror collections. So let's jump right in, and as we do this, the Frankenstein monster here, uh, likeness of Karloff, of course, is going to be watching, looking over. First one up here is Zombie! Lucio Fulci's Zombie! Love, love, love zombie. It's it's one of Lucio Fulci's best, of course. Uh, my favorite is, of course, The Beyond. I love uh, getting, you know, uh, his his trilogy. His what does he call it? The um, <laughs> you got a uh, House by the Cemetery, The Beyond, and The Beyond, House by the Cemetery, and. City of the Living Dead. I almost drew a blank on that one. I love that trilogy to death. Zombies right up there with them. One of his best films. Like I said, this one has great gore. I mean, the eye shot, the needle in the eye, or not the needle, but the uh, spike or whatever it was into the woman's eye. That scene goes on for like two minutes, it feels. It feels like a lifetime. And that's what Lucio Fulci does so damn well. Bleeds of atmosphere. I love the, the setting of this film, which is on an island. It's got a a jungle sort of at mangrove atmosphere and it really is unique in terms of a zombie film for 79 i think this came out yeah 79 now this blu-ray i've yet to crack because they keep releasing new releases of zombie this was the original blue underground release of zombie they did another one which was like a new transfer and now i think there's a 4k so i'm like oh my god so i've kept it sealed i've watched it by other means uh rewatched it things like that but this one is still sealed so i'm probably going to sell it off at some point to upgrade to a better version of this but i don't even know how much this goes for anymore but great poster great film just great movie altogether. i love zombie one of the best zombie films of all time and it's fitting that it's called Zombie. Next up we have Maniac, Maniac on the blue. Uh, <laughs> Maniac is a really good film. Um, I, I really love Joe Spinell as a, as a character actor. This is one of the only, few films, I think he did The Undertaker, is that, is that the name of the film? This is one of the few films that he starred in. And he has a such an, a weird, uh, uncanny and awkward, anxious nervous kind of and also sleazy and kind of presence on screen you know he's a, a very new york actor new york accent and he's got like these bulging eyes and just a really weird look and he's a great actor this film is his best in my opinion and you know in terms of anything that i've seen him in he's always great you know popping up in little new york movies from the 80s and 90s things like that 70s even i think late 70s i think he was in uh i think he had an appearance in godfather 2 or the or the original, I think it was two. Either way, uh, Joe Spinell in Maniac is, is fantastic. This is a great movie about a psychotic maniac <laughs> who is, uh, it's really a character study about this man just going insane. It's got a fantastic ending that just will stick with you. Absolutely, it will stick with you. This was remade with Elijah Wood. Not a bad flick, actually. Uh, I thought it was a pretty good remake, but I much prefer the original. I think it just does the sleazy New York feel 
so much better. And I, I have a soft spot for those those kinds of films growing up in Stanford, Connecticut, which was kind of like a New York City, or we wanted to be a New York City light extension of uh, the uh, New York City, like the metropolitan area. Area, So I have a soft spot for films like that uh, and kind of gazing into the 80s, you know, the sleazy 80s New York underground scene. And this film really captures that very well. Uh, I forgot who directed this. Right, of course, William Lutz Lustig, who did uh, uh, Maniac Cop. This one is great. So Maniac and Maniac Cop. Anyway, guys, that's Maniac. Check it out. Maniac! Next up, I got this actually recently from HamiltonBook.com. That is Manhattan Baby, another Lucio Fulci film. And I have to say Lucio Fulci like this. Maybe it's the Italian in me. I don't know what it is, but you have to say Lucio Fulci. <laughs> Manhattan Baby. This come. This is a special edition with a, a C, uh, the soundtrack, the Blu-ray, the DVD. It's got all that. It's tons of special features. I enjoy this film. There are things that I really like about it. The problem is this film was butchered in post, and uh, it was even meddled with during production. Lucio Fulci, of course, had his vision. It was tampered with. I think this may have been the film that him and his producer uh, butted heads and kind of split off, and it really does show in this film, but it has great on-location shooting in Egypt, believe it or not, believe it or not, in the beginning and a, a few points in the film, and it looks beautiful. You know, just think about Lucio Fulci filming in, in Egypt. It, it looks as good as you could imagine, and probably better. It's just wonderful. So the intro takes place in Egypt, a good 10-15 minutes, and it's a weird story. You know, it's hard for me to to describe the plots of Lucio Fulci films because his movies are ones that you just experience. You just feel as you're watching them. They're surreal. The stories are usually over uh, simple, but uh, presented in an overcomplicated way, I'll say. Um, you know, Manhattan Baby is definitely one of those. It's sort of poltergeist. It definitely draws from poltergeist. Um, even poltergeist, it takes place in New York City, so it's got these big location shooting and it's just uh, it's just a surreal surreal flick with some really absurd moments not my favorite Lucio Fulci film but definitely I don't dislike any Lucio Fulci films even his bad bad ones even the ones that were butchered I still enjoy them and I'm very glad to own this in this beautiful special edition that I got for I think 20 bucks on um, hamiltonbook.com hopefully it's still there so you guys could snag this while it's there because i think it's going to go out of print and it's going to shoot up as we all know so manhattan baby gotta love that poster too oh it's killer next up we have jorge graus the living dead at manchester morgue which is also known by let sleeping corpses lie and a few uh maybe a t another title or two this is one of those films that just has a ton of titles now this has a new release i know i've been uh told about it and i looked into it and god almighty it's expensive <laughs> for one film to spend 80 bucks is incredible you know i'm already trying to save my pennies for the dawn of the dead release which is just e even more f expensive it's crazy but the living dead at manchester morgue may be my favorite zombie film of all time this and dawn of the dead it is definitely the most underrated zombie film of all time. It's a Spanish zombie film, maybe a Spanish-Italian production. I'm not positive on that, but I know it was, yeah, Jorge Grau, Gianetto De Rossi. Yeah, so it's definitely a Spanish and Italian co-production. This one is absolutely fantastic. It has so much atmosphere. One thing that sticks out about this is the feasting scenes were definitely inspired by Night of the Living Dead. And what I love about Night of the Living Dead's uh, feasting scenes is the lack of music or uh, ambience. Or No, there's, there's some ambience. The lack of music and all you get is like ambient sounds and the chewing of flesh, the, the, the sliminess, the goopiness of eating flesh. And there are scenes in this where the camera lingers on these zombies who are just slowly consuming flesh and just like animalistic and it is so disturbing and I love it no music it is just devoid of music those are the things that stand out about Manchester Morgue honestly I'm re-watching it this month because it's been years I want to say six seven years since I've seen this I've only seen it once but it left an impression the cinematography is ethereal surreal it, it is a lot like uh, Lucio Fulci's film it has a very Italian feel but it stands apart it feels unique because the director is not italian and it, it's a very interesting melding of italian and spanish uh, horror movie production and it does have uh, touches of the blind dead movies of which i've only seen a couple i think two maybe maybe one 
Maybe I've only seen one, actually. Uh, the first one. Either way, guys, I can't recommend this film enough. It is fantastic. Watch it this October. Watch it! Next up, speak of the devil, Lucio Fulci. We have The New York Ripper, a film that I cannot really get into. I'm not a big erotic giallo. It's not very erotic. It has aspects. But this is a giallo that just doesn't really click with me. Um, it is about a serial killer, obviously, stalking women. Attractive young women, beautiful young women. And it just... it. I don't know. It's I don't know how to describe what I don't like about it. It just is one of those. Again, it's a Lucio Fulci film. It's just a feeling that you get, and uh, it just didn't rub me the right way. Some of the scenes. It's very ex exploitative, which I'm fine with. But you know, sometimes exploitation just kind of rubs me the wrong way. That was the case with New York Ripper. Not a fan of that film, and I, I was very bored at points. And I was like checking the time. I'm like, Jesus, man, this is slow. That's probably my least favorite. Fulci film, but I'll, I'll watch it again. Don't get me wrong. You know, I will give it another whirl at some point. Next up here, we have uh, City of the Living Dead and The House by the Cemetery. I haven't seen this since I was a teenager, The House by the Cemetery. City of the Living Dead, I've only seen once as well, but god damn, does that leave an impression. That movie is known for its gore. I mean, incredible gore. I, I don't... I want to talk about the scene, uh, spoilers real quick, for one of the great gore scenes of all time, where a woman... <laughs> I believe, as far as I remember, pukes up her insides. And it takes like a two minutes for her to puke up all of her insides. And it's like intestines and it just keeps coming out of her mouth. It is so disgusting. One of the great effects of all time in horror cinema, in my opinion. I, I think it's fantastic. But the movie is great too, as a whole. It's again, one of his, it's part of his, um, I forget what it's called, uh, Gates of Hell trilogy. That's what it's called. Where it's uh, City of the Living Dead, House by the Cemetery and the beyond. Can't really talk about House by the Cemetery too much. I remember enjoying it. I watched it when I was like 19 or tw I want maybe it was my early 20s and it was on like a really shoddy like diamond release DVD. It wasn't it wasn't very good. So, I have to rewatch it on blue on, on the Blue Underground Blu-ray here. So that is the Lucio Fulci collection. Very glad to own this. I'm draw I'm drawing near to owning almost all of his films on Blu-ray, which is fantastic. Next up, we have Death Dream. This has another title. I forget what the other title... Dead of Night, that's it. It says on the back. Dead of Night, the, the Night Walk, The Night Andy Came Home. What a title. Yes, this is a, a, a great film by Bob Clark, who was one of the most versatile directors, you know, that, that was doing it. Um, he passed way too soon. He got into a car accident with his son, God Almighty. Um, and they passed, like, uh, way, 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 way too soon. And Bob Clark had just done, like, Baby Geniuses or whatever. But he, he, Baby Geniuses, you know, Death Dream, Black Christmas, Christmas Story. He made one of the great Christmas horror movies and one of the, uh, I'm not a fan of Christmas Story, but people, uh, people think it's one of the great uh, Christmas movies of all time. So, God, it's just such a diverse director. And I'm, I'm not even mentioning um, a bunch of other films that he's done in various, various genres. But yeah, Death Dream is uh, The Monkey's Paw. If you guys are familiar with The Monkey's Paw, um, uh, you know, a family wishes their son back from, from, uh, you know, they lose their son in the war, they wish him back, and he appears on their doorstep, and he is not what he seems, and things start to uh, go, go badly. Uh, you know, of course, the, the mother and father are happy to see him, but they grow suspicious, especially the father, who is fantastic in this movie. Oh, he's so good in this movie. But this, uh, again, just a really solid atmospheric horror film by Bob Clark, who just does it so well. This is one of my favorite Bob Clark films. I like this even more than Black Christmas. Yes, I said it. I love Black Christmas, but Death Dream is my shit. It's so good. Death Dream. Check it out. Next up, I believe this is out of print. I think one of the most underrated horror films possibly of all time. Definitely of the 80s. Dead and Buried. This should be up there. When people talk about 80s, this should be up there with Fright Night and, you know, um, all the classics from the 80s. Evil Dead. I could go on and on. I'm not going to. <laughs> we'll be here forever. Dead and Buried is one of the greats. I want to say 1981. Yep, 81. Uh, it's directed by... Gary Sherman, I should know that. I did a whole riff review on this. Go check that out if, you, if you're if you interested uh, when I was doing the riff reviews, which I want to get back into, and I may be doing. Let me know if you guys want to see more riff reviews, if you even remember them. That's what I started doing on my channel when it, when it began. Dead and Buried uh, follows a, a sheriff, a police sheriff in a small town, a small New England town, foggy New England town. This film bleeds of atmosphere as well. You could tell, like, the, the, the films that I, the horror films that I really love, uh, 
depend on the atmosphere. Not depend, but they are just accentuated by its atmosphere. And this, and growing up in New England, um, it, it really captures that New England feel. I, you know, I think it might be the Pacific Northwest where they filmed it, but I think they say they want it to take place in New England. It does feel like a murky New England coastal town, maybe in uh, Massachusetts, you know. And Dead and Buried is just fantastic. You know, it's it's about the sheriff who's trying to figure out what the hell's going on in a small town. People are dying. People are reappearing. Weird things going on. Jack Albertson is the is the uh, embalmer or what do they call them? Cremator, caretaker. I'm blanking on the word. But uh, Jack Albertson is fantastic in this movie. Uh, the late Jack Albertson. He was very, very old by the time he got into this. But um, about, what, six, seven years earlier, he would be in... Uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory as Charlie Bucket's um, granddad, you know, uh, uh, what's his name? Pop, um, uh, Grandpa Joe was his name. <laughs> Grandpa Joe. And Dead and Buried is just one of the greats, guys. If you haven't seen this, definitely check it out. It's got uh, Robert England in a in a, uh, a small role, uh, more than a small role. It's a bit role, don't get me wrong. But you see his face a few times. He's got a bunch of lines and he's uh, super creepy. This is pre-Nightmare before uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, obviously, 81. Dead and Buried, guys. Check this one out. Next up, here's one I haven't seen. I've been on a roll with films I have seen. Daughters of Darkness. This, I believe, is an erotic horror film. I have tried to penetrate those, and I, I've had a hard time, I will say, but I think that is mostly because I've only stuck to Jess Franco films, or Jesus Franco. Uh, Jesus Franco is not my favorite director. In fact, I don't think he's a talented director at all, and a lot of people love him. I, I hate Vampiros Lesbos. I hate Exorcism. Ah, I can't stand his movies, but I'm going to continue to try. And this one, obviously, I don't think it's directed by him. Yeah, Harry Kumel is the director here. Um, I'm not sure what country this is. Kumel, is it? Let's see, is it a French film? Yeah, I, th I think it might be a French film. There you go. So French erotic horror film. <laughs> that makes sense for the French. And um, maybe it's a little bit better than Spanish erotic horror films. We'll give it a whirl at some point. Daughters of... <laughs> Voice cracking. Daughters of Darkness. Next up, we have a Killer Thrillers collection. None of which I've seen. I've yet to even open this. I remember when I sold off all my DVDs to, to fund this bad boy. And I think this is out of print now. Baba Yaga, which is a boogeyman, right? I learned that from John Wick. Boogeyman in Russian, <laughs> I think. Uh, I don't know anything about that film. Night Train Murders. And Strip Nude for Your Killer, which sounds like a good time. I don't know anything about these films, guys, so I'm going to rely on you to let me know which ones are worth watching, if they're all worth watching, which ones I should bust out this October, maybe. Let me know down in the comments below because I have no idea. Next up, we get to the DVDs, the Blue Underground DVDs. This one still has a sticker from the old Ed McKay store that I used to work at in Raleigh. This one, I believe, is another erotic horror film, Vampires with a Y. That's what that's what makes it unique. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of sex going on in the back. And let's see. Jose Ramon Larraz. Larraz. Okay. So Spanish horror film. Spanish erotic horror film. I got to give I gotta give this one a shot because it's not Jesus Franco. <laughs> Vampires. Is this one good, guys? What's your favorite erotic horror film? Let me know that. I am genuinely curious because I've sh I'm close to striking out. I've seen two and uh, that's two strikes. So let me know down in the comments below what is your favorite. I know a lot of people are fans of Jess Franco. I get it, but he's not for me. So recommend something else. <laughs> that is Vampires. Next up is a Dario Argento film. This does have a Blu-ray release. I really need to upgrade this one because this is a pretty solid... This is the best 90s Dario film that I've seen. Uh, Stendhal Syndrome. And it follows a young girl, uh, Asia, Asia Argento actually, his daughter, who has like this weird hallucinatory disorder thing that she, she like, she goes into like this hallucinogenic fervor when she f sees works of art. And of course it's a giallo, so there's a serial killer abound and it's weird, of course, right? Because it's Dario Argento. Not as weird as Fulci, but you know, it's strange, it's surreal. It's got some, it's a good giallo. It's a solid 90s giallo and there aren't many of those. So that is Dario Argento's The Stendhal's syndrome. I was surprised with the, this one. I, I didn't think I was going to really love it or like it, but I really do like it. And I do need to upgrade this one. The Stendhal 
syndrome. Next up, we have Mark of the Devil. I think, is this another erotic one? The first movie rated V for violence, totally uncut and uncensored. Michael Armstrong, sounds like an American film or an English film. Yeah, I, I don't think it's, um, yeah, I don't think it's erotic. Uh, I think it's satanic and it's a period piece. So I'm interested in this one for sure, obviously. Uh, I don't know anything about it though. Mark of the Devil. You guys like this one? No? Yeah? Ha! We've got a couple more DVDs here from Blue Underground. This one I really need to upgrade because I, I love this film. This is one of the most, this is, to say that this is one of the most surreal Italian horror films that's saying something, man, because there so many of them from the 80s and 90s are so bizarre, and the 70s. This one is up there. Contamination. This is an alien ripoff. Luigi Cozzi. Uh, great gore. Gr really strange monster design. This has a monster towards the end that is this big blob of alien goopiness that is coming down this hallway. It reminds me of the film The Brain. That's a very obscure film. I doubt that anybody uh, really knows that one. But it, it, it it's this giant alien thing coming down this hallway, and it's making the, these hissing and cicada noises and shit, as far as I can remember. And uh, it, it goes on and on and on, and it has so many just creepy, surreal moments. The intro to this film where the eggs are, like, exploding... Ah, oh, it's such a cool special effects extravaganza. It really is. Contamination is the best Luigi uh, Cozzi film I've seen, who also goes by Louis Coates, I believe. This one is great. I really need to upgrade Contamination. It's, uh, it's an alien ripoff, but it is definitely unique enough to stand on its own. Uh, that is for sure. It's inspired very heavily by Alien, we'll say. Very heavily. That is Contam in Nation. Next up, talking about some of the most underrated horror films of all time. I've only seen this once, but man, did it leave an impression. I really have to rewatch this to to in order to back up my back up my claim that this is one of the most underrated horror films of all time. That is Anguish. I don't think this even has a Blu-ray, which breaks my heart. Zelda Rubenstein is in this with Michael Lerner. Really good cast. You know, how do I say? This movie doesn't have its leads are not pretty shiny happy people. They're distraught. They're broken. They're lost. Michael Lerner's character is hypnotized by his mother and forced to start going on a crazy killing spree. And Michael Lerner is so good in this film. I, I can actually compare the performance in Human Centipede 2, actually. the uh, I forget that guy's name who was in that one. I actually don't mind the second film. I, I like the aesthetic. I like the lead character. I like the conceit. Um, and he reminds me of that kind of a character. Michael Lerner is great in this. Zelda Rubenstein is fantastic in this as well. It's a Spanish horror film. I want to shout the director. Bigas Luna. Bigas Luna. I don't know what else he's done. But man, this is like almost William Castle inspired. Uh, you'll know what I mean when you see it. I cannot talk about what makes this film so special. But there is a moment in this film that will f*** you up. And then there's a, then it's followed by another moment that will f*** you up. So you have to check Anguish out, guys. I hope this gets a Blu-ray release at some point. I love this film. Can't wait to rewatch it. Anguish. Now we are on to the four Grindhouse releases that I have. I'm saving my favorite for last. But I love all these films. And I've seen all these films. Grindhouse puts out, these are some of my favorite horror films of all time. Pieces is one of my favorite horror films of all time. At least based on my first viewing, which was on a really shoddy DVD. I, When I say it's one of my favorite horror films of all time, it's not a very well-made film <laughs> by any means. But it has a an atmosphere that is ineffable. It has these moments, like a ninja popping up for no reason in the middle of the movie. Like, why is there a ninja? There is literally no reason for a ninja. The gore in this is what you go to this movie for. It is so surreal, bloody, abrupt, and it'll just... It'll just grind you, man. It's so good. I love the gore in this film. And this film is directed by Juan Piquer Smith, I want to say? Juan Piquer Smith? I'm gonna check now, you know me, I, I try to get it on my own. And of course, it does not say the director's name, but I believe it's Juan Piquer Smith. I'll probably correct myself if I'm wrong. This follows a crazed, uh, crazy maniac killer, psychopathic killer, 
who is killing young women, very typical, but he's taking their body parts and doing something with them. I'm not going to say what that is. You could, you could surmise. But this film is so wonderful. It has a palpable atmosphere. It, it exudes from the screen. All, a lot of these films I'm talking about have such atmosphere. This is like stepping into another world. It's a lot like Fulci's films in terms of atmosphere. But Gareth Smith really nails it in this one. His other films, he doesn't quite get the atmosphere that he does in pieces. And mind you, I saw this on a really shoddy DVD, very bad quality. So I wonder if that added something to it. I'm not sure. Well, I can't wait to check out the Grindhouse release, which has a, a couple cuts of the movie, actually. Pieces and Mil Gritos Tiene La Noche. Mil Gritos... Free, gritos is free. DNA is to have the night. Free to have the night. I, I can't translate that. <laughs> but it's the original uncensored director's cut. Three disc deluxe edition, two Blu-rays, and the soundtrack CD. That is incredible. Can't wait to check this out again. Pieces. Whew, it's hot in here. I, I got my lights on and it's it's uh, it's steamy in here, so forgive my, my sweat. And I'm getting very animated. I'm getting excited about all these films. Next up, this is definitely one of my favorites of all time, especially from the 70s. I Drink Your Blood. This is a crazy movie. Acid-induced from 1971, way before its time. Gory about a group of <laughs> acid-induced, crazy, psychopathic hippies. Yes, you heard me right. They're a band of hippies that go around and just wreak havoc, just kill people. And it has some great scenes, and it's very taboo. Uh, there's some stuff to do with children in this, and it, it not what you think. It's more violence against children, which I'm always for, in cinema. In cinema. Anyway, this I cannot recommend enough. Actually, I have to show you something. One moment. Okay, so, I Drink Your Blood. This actually came with a syringe which will make more sense to you when you see it. Actually, I, I miss remembering. There wasn't violence against children, I don't think. I've only seen this film once, so bear with me. But children doing violence, I will say. <laughs> and this has something to do with it. This is a hypo hypogenic needle here as a little, like, swag, prop kind of thing, which is just hilarious. Guys, I cannot, I cannot recommend I Drink Your Blood enough. This obviously... Grindhouse, I gotta, I gotta praise Grindhouse here. They do such an unbelievable job... So many special features. Uh, it's just This actually has um, another one of uh, William Greff's films, I Eat Your Skin. So you have I Drink Your Blood and I Eat Your Skin that he did in 64. And then Blue Sextet in 1969. which And it says, plus other surprises. This looks fantastic. I've seen this one. Grindhouse does a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, can't recommend I Drink Your Blood enough. It is one of the great horror films of the 70s and really is underrated and set... I think a standard. I think it was way ahead of its time. I mean, this is like, this is like, pre, this is pre-Exorcist. So this is at least a few years ahead of its time, maybe even more. I love I Drink Your Blood. And with a title like that and satanic imagery on the front and murderous hippies, you can't go wrong, man. I Drink Your Blood. Next up, we have a film that I do enjoy and I appreciate as a found footage aficionado. <laughs> Cannibal Holocaust. This is really the first of its kind. It's not a full found footage film. It's a narrative and found footage film sort of smushed together. And it's good. It has uh, animal cruelty, which I absolutely despise and I don't get behind in any fashion. And I can't watch those scenes. And I hope this has a version where they take that stuff out. I think they do. I used to have Cannibal Furox. I read up about it and I was like, no, this film's not for me. It has way, from what I hear, it has way too much animal cruelty. I just wouldn't be able to enjoy it. I don't even know if I can enjoy this anymore, to be quite honest. I haven't seen it in a decade. And I've changed quite a bit in a decade. <laughs> Cannibal Holocaust is a classic, though. I have to have it in the collection because I'm a found footage fan. And it is the first of its kind, um, even though it wasn't full found footage. I think that may have been the McPherson tape. I've talked about that recently. But yeah, this is about, uh, you know, a group of, uh, I think it was scientists or... Uh, anthropologists going and studying these tribes and they get captured and eaten the end and last up but certainly not least this is in my top five favorite horror films of all time the beyond no film has atmosphere like the beyond the cinematography is unmatched it's the best lucio fulci has ever been he's at his prime coming off of zombie for the beyond this is about a, a house that is built on one of the gates of hell. It's one of the gates of hell uh, trilogies, right? 
And it's giallo-ish. It's dreamlike. It's zombie-ish, ghoulish. Uh, I don't... That's the thing, man. Fulci's films are in a category of their own. Yeah, some of his films are definitely zombie films. This is a zombie film, but there's more to it. There's more to it. Uh, uh, Fabio Fritzi's music. Is that Fabio Fritzi? Did I get that right? Fabio Fritzi. Oh, Fabio Fritzi. Fabio Fritzi. I got it. Bonus CD. It has the CD, which I have listened to. I, I actually should bust this out and put it in my car for this Halloween or this October. I love the Beyond absolutely to death. It is one of my favorite horror films of all time. One of my favorite films of all time. And you know, it's funny. The first time I watched it, I was like, this is good. I, I like this. It's different. It's surreal. I wasn't blown away. It was like a three out of five, right? Um, and then a couple years later, I watched it again and it changed my perception of cinema. Uh, this is one of the most influential films for me that you could craft something that just feels like it exists in a whole nother dimension. And he does that so well with just floaty ethereal camera work going through hallways and upstairs and around bends and, and just atmospheric, um, establishing shots of the house and the uh, the shot on the highway with the woman with the whited out eyes. By the way, the whited out eyes is one of those things that I've taken. I, I love that imagery. It's so creepy to me because eyes, you know, the window to the soul, when they're not there, black is creepy too, but the whiteness, something about the white of the eye, just whited out eyes just absolutely creeps me. The blind woman, of course, in this film. And man, does this affect me every time I watch it. I try to watch it once a year. One of my favorites of all time. I can talk about it on and on and on. The Beyond. I just want to thank you all for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed this little boutique label collection video. I have more of these to do for sure. Not sure how many I'm going to do in October because I want to do other cool things that I have planned. You shall see. Stay tuned. Um, I've got something really cool planned, guys. I don't want to say too much. All I will say is it's horror related and I've been working on it for the last four months. A lot. <laughs> so I'm getting to the point where it's almost finished and you will all be able to hopefully enjoy it by the end of the month, uh, by October 31st, Halloween. So stay tuned for that. I'd love to know what your favorite Blue Underground release is and as well as your favorite Grindhouse releasing release is. That's funny to say, right? Grindhouse releasing release. I'd love to know what your favorites are. Feel free to leave them down in the comments below. It could be something that I don't have. In fact, that would be cool so I could kind of look into it. I, I don't know what else they have. I, I think I have a, a bunch of them. I know I don't have all of them. So let me know which ones I should look out for, which ones I should pick up down in the comments below and we'll get a discussion roll. You know, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and want to see more videos like it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell. Ah! bell for notificaciones. I also have t-shirts and a Patreon now, so feel free to check those out in the description below. Anyway, guys, it's really, really hot. I will see you next time. Board Cyborg is out. Happy October, motherfucker!